Hello, myself Suraj M. Sahu from Mind Magma, and in today's video, we are going to cover bulk explosive storage and safety guidance. First, we'll start with the content part. So, in this video, we'll be covering bulk explosive, safety guidance, and storage of explosive. Now, we'll start first row sheet for bulk loading doped emulsion explosive. So, at manufacturing unit, there are two phases one is oxidizer phase and fuel phase. In oxidizer phase, you can say it is the source of oxygen for the explosive. For example, in this, we use ammonium nitrate, calcium nitrate, and in fuel phase, we use the fuel or we provide the fuel. For example, like carbon fuel, TNT, RDX, and then it mixes up with the emulsifier. Emulsifiers are added to prolong the life of the explosive by providing a stable interference between the water and oil phase. So now then it goes to the mixer and then it add, mixes all these three things, emulsifiers, oxidizer, fuel, and then it forms the dry fuel. Then through ungassed emulsion, the, so that dry fuel is transferred to the tank. And from there, it goes to the storage tank or where both transfer plus doping is done. And from there, it goes to the bulk loading vehicle where the gassing agent is added by the user end. where it goes, whoever is going to use, he adds up the gas gassing agent. Now the question arises is why gassing agent? So what gassing agent basically does is it minimizes the total amount of water in the explosive composition and therefore it increases the energy of the explosive. Then after that, it goes to the blast site. Now we'll continue. So this is, now we'll go to the parts of the uh, bulk explosive carrier vehicle. So as you can see, first is the fuel oil tank. Then after that loading hatch is there, which is for the safety and the loading of the material or the explosives. Then unbeam is there. Then a chute is there. What is chute is, it is a sloping channel or slide for conveying things to a lower level. Next is the control panel which controls the work and next is the hydraulic system control. So hydraulic system controls the transmission of energy. What it does is it transfers the mechanical energy of a prime motor into a fluid energy. Next is, as you can see, is the transfer auger. So what transfer auger is, it is a basically an efficient way to move product from your truck to the anger. Okay. So the next part is uh, shivel joint. So what is shivel joint? These are basically a precision component for the connection between the stationary pipes and the rotatory machines or the rotating part of the machine. Next is the discharging anger, which is the main or uh, next is the fuel oil jet. And next part is the hydraulic cylinder or which you can say that it varies the inclination of the discharge auger. And next part is the discharge auger. So discharge auger main purpose is to direct material from the inside to the outside. Next is the uh, a discharge point is there, truck fuel tank part is there, and main auger is there. Then fuel oil pump. What basically fuel pump, oil pump is, its primary purpose is to circulate engine oil under pressure to bearings pistons, which allows the use of higher capacity fluids and bearings and also assist in engine cooling. Now next is the battery isolation switch. So what battery isolation switch is, it basically helps the ensure, it basically helps to ensure that the starting battery, where the machine is starting, that time the battery has the sufficient power to start the engine and also it recharges the battery. So these are all the parts of the vehicle Next, we'll go with the safety guidance. So what basically safety guidance is? So first is the vehicle inspection. The vehicle should be inspected thoroughly before using it, like all the aspects of the vehicles to be um, very, like very strictly inspected before using it. For example, that machinery, that vehicles brakes, glasses, and all the basic parameters to be checked. Next is the gen general safety guidelines, which has to be given to the driver and it should be followed also. And then we have to make sure the driver's safety is also there. The driver is having proper driving license and he's having that experience also and proper safety managements are done for him. Next is the attended vehicles. So what does attended vehicles basically means is that at any cost, 
vehicle or the explosive carrying vehicle should not be unattended what is unattended means that while we are traveling with the explosives that time to one main driver and a co-worker or co-helper should be there in the vehicle and if at any cost something happens that times or some work comes so that times one person should be there in the vehicle it should not be unattended that is one part next is the use of fire extinguishers as you can see so use of fire extinguishers like fire extinguishers should be there in the vehicle because as you are carrying the explosives so in case of some emergency it will be helpful next is the types of explosives and blasting agents should be kept properly traffic regulations should be followed while traveling or transporting state and local laws to be followed and the delivery of explosives should be smooth so these are all the safety guidance for the transporting of explosives next is the storage of explosive so explosive shall not be taken or kept in any building except a magazine so basically what magazine is a magazine is a place where all the explosives are kept and it has some special abilities or special parameters set for magazines next is the surplus explosives brought out of the mine at the end of the shift what does that mean is basically that after the mine work is done if some extra amount or the surplus explosive is available in the mine then it should be brought out from the mine after the finishing or the ending of the shift next next one is no explosive other than a fuse or a detonator shall be used for or issued for use in the mine like no other explosive like flame powder or anything else other than fuse or a detonator shall be issued for the use in the mines so these are all proper guidelines and strictly rules which should be followed next are explosives are stored shall be in charge of a competent person like the guy who is there or the person who is there um, for the explosive stored or explosive store he should have that experience in that thing and he should be completely responsible for this explosive stored houses or magazine next is no detonators shall be kept in a case of container which contains other explosives materials or tools which it says explains clearly that and not any detonator or detonator or explosive should be kept different it should not be mixed together because detonator is a very sensitive small thing which can trigger the explosives so there should be no chance of risk or it should though no risk should be taken so it should be kept different so no detonators shall be kept in a case of container which contains other explosives materials or tools now the last point is that no case or container shall contain more than 5 kilograms of explosives so that was the storage of explosive part so i hope uh, i have covered the topic properly so thank you from mind magma have a good day